Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through the NBA slate on DraftKings for Friday, December the 23rd. Uh, now, this is our you know, big slate before the Christmas Day slate. Uh, there's obviously no games on Christmas Eve, no games on Saturday. So we've got a massive slate tonight, 14 games. Um, almost every team is in action. There's only two teams not playing today. So, man, I'm going to try and keep this video like under 30 minutes if possible, give you guys a quick game-by-game -game breakdown. Um, some games we're going to spend a little bit more time, go, uh, time on, and then some games we're just going to fly through. But still going to go through each one, talk through each one of these games, and, and give you guys my thoughts on the slate, what I do like taking a first look on a Thursday night when I'm making this video. But before we do get started with the breakdown, as always, if you guys do enjoy these DFS videos, if they help you out, please hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to the channel, check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the sponsor of this video. You guys can sign up for Prize Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOAH. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. Um, if you've never heard of Prize Picks, they're a player prop based DFS site. So very simple and easy to use. You're just taking more or less on a player's projection. Um, they do already have some projections posted for Friday. Um, you know, Really not much is up on the board right now. They just have props up for the Sixers and um, Clippers game. But obviously, you know, check the board again on Friday, sometime Friday afternoon. You'll see a ton of props available from you know pretty much every game, from just about every starter, and see if there's anything that stands out to you. Um, again, you're, you're just taking more or less on a player's projection. You have to make at least two picks, but you can make it to six picks. You can win up to 25x your money on prize picks. So... Give them a try, guys. Sign up with that promo code, promo code NOAH, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. But talking through this uh, you know, massive Friday night slate, we'll start off with the first game of the night, the Spurs and the Magic. So you know, starting off on Orlando, I think it's a pretty good spot for Orlando because San Antonio has been playing at a fast pace this year. They're a really bad defensive team. So I could definitely get behind some Orlando guys today. I think uh, Paulo Bencaro at 8,100 feels priced about right, but I definitely think his upside is pretty high in this matchup just because of how bad defensively this Spurs team is. I think Ben Caro is more of a GBP option. Um, I don't think he's someone I'd be playing like in cash games or core, as a core player or anything, but I, I don't have an issue going to Ben Caro even on a big slate like this. The rest of the Magic though, like you know, Wendell Carter Jr. I think could return today. He's listed as questionable. If he comes back, that definitely affects guys like Bol Bol, um, you know, Mo Wagner. Those guys are really wouldn't be any, you know, no interest in those guys. Um, Franz Wagner at 6,200, I think is fine. You know, him and, him and him and Ben Caro are probably my two favorite plays from Orlando. I don't think I'm going to go to anyone else, though. Markel Fultz, I had some interest in last slate in a really good matchup against Houston. He disappointed. I could definitely see him bouncing back here in another good matchup against San Antonio. But on a big slate like this, probably not going to go to Fultz. And that's really it from Orlando. Now, on the other side, looking at the Spurs, it's a back-to-back -back for the Spurs. So we'll have to pay attention to their injury report. Uh, Kelvin Johnson was doubtful on, on Thursday and did not play. Probably we'll see Kelvin Johnson sit again. If he does sit, we can expect a bigger role for Den Vassell, a bigger role for Trey Jones. Both those guys feel priced about right here, um, especially on a big slate like this, but I think they are GPP options. Jakob Pertl got into some foul trouble on Thursday. That game is going on as I'm making this video. You know, Pertl's been on a minutes limit lately, plus it's a back-to-back, -back, so I'm not super interested in Pertl today. The rest of the Spurs, I'll, I'll pass on on a big slate like this. I think we can go ahead and talk about the next game. So next game, the Clippers and the Sixers. Not one I'm super interested in here either. You know, both these teams play at like a relatively slow pace. They're pretty good defensively as well. I think Joel Embiid is someone we can definitely go to in tournaments. I think this is a pretty good spot for him against the Clippers. I don't think the Clippers really have a good defensive big that can stop Embiid. I think if I want to, if I remember correctly, I think Embiid has had a lot of big games against Zubak in the past. Um, so I think it's a pretty good spot for Embiid. I think he is my favorite play in this game. Harden at 9,900 is okay, but on this slate, I'm not super interested in Harden. Melton, Harris, no one else on you know, Philadelphia stands out. And then on the other side with the with the Clippers, they're pretty much fully healthy here outside of John Wall, who's listed as questionable. And even if John Wall's out, like I don't think that changes too much. Um, you, know, you got Paul George at 8,900. You got Kawhi at 8K. Last game, they said they were going to limit a lot of these guys. Um, Paul George played 31 minutes in a blowout win. I think he'll probably play close to normal minutes today. I doubt he's on a minutes restriction again. So like Paul George is playable, but like I'm not super interested in the Clippers when they're fully healthy and when they're all priced correctly. I will say that if John Wall sits, I think it's a little boost for Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson is pretty cheap. He's only 4900 He'd become a playable option if John Wall's out, but I wouldn't be like super excited to roster Reggie Jackson just because he's, you know, he's not been that great this year, and it's a big slate. We have so many other options. Um, this is really not that appealing of a game, so let's go ahead and move on to the next game, Minnesota and Boston. So looking at the Celtics today, got to keep an eye on the status of Marcus Smart, who was out last game. Uh, he's questionable for this game. We did see Peyton Pritchard start in place of Marcus Smart. I don't think really Peyton Pritchard did much. Um, he played 17 minutes, had 12 draftings points. So even if Pritchard starts again, 
Not super interested in him, but I think it would be a little bit of a boost for Malcolm Brogdon, a little bit of a boost for Derek White as well. Last game off the bench, Brogdon played 30 minutes, was really productive. His price tag came up to 5,700, but I'd have a little bit of interest in Brogdon today if Smart is out. A little bit of interest in Derek White as well. He played 26 minutes, wasn't super productive, but I think at 4,100, he's like an okay value. And then, you know, Tatum and Brown, where they're priced at, 10-8 for Tatum, 9,500 for Brown. Don't love either one on this slate. I will say that, you know, Minnesota plays at a really fast pace. Like, I think this game has some, you know, kind of high-scoring upside. Um, but on a, on a 14 game, I think there's other guys I'd rather pay up for than these Celtics guys. And then, you know, no one else on this Celtics team stands out, I don't think. And then on the other side with Minnesota, Anthony Edwards should continue to have a really big role, you know, while Rudy Go or excuse me, while Carl Anthony Towns is out. Rudy Gobert is questionable, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Gobert did play last game. You know, Edwards has been really good without Towns as of late. The price tag at 9,200, though, feels about right, especially for this, you know, pretty tough matchup against the Celtics. So I'm not super interested in Anthony Edwards today. Uh, Gobert, if he plays, he's okay. I mean, Boston's not been as strong defensively against Bigs this year, but I think now that they have Robert Williams back, it definitely becomes a slightly tougher matchup for Gobert, but Gobert has been pretty productive as of late without Towns. He's been playing big minutes as well. His price tag's at 7,300, which does feel a little bit too cheap. So probably favorite play on Minnesota is Gobert if he plays. If he doesn't play, obviously we could look to Naz Reed. Naz Reed would be a really good option at 5,300. He's been super productive in the games that he's played without Gobert and without Towns. Um, and obviously, you know, as a good permanent producer, even at this price tag of 5,300, you could argue that's still too cheap for Naz Reed if Rudy Gobert is out. So whichever guy starts the center for Minnesota, whether it be Gobert or Reed, have interest in, you know, whoever starts there. Russell is 7,200, probably going to pass on. Kyle Anderson, probably going to pass on if he plays. You know, nothing else on Minnesota stands out today. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game, Toronto and Cleveland. So for the Raptors, I don't love much on this Raptors team. You know, they're a team that when they're fully healthy, man, it's always tough to predict which guy's going to have the big game. As of late, it's been Pascal Siakam, and Siakam is coming off a massive game against the Knicks where he put up 76 drafting points. His last two games, he's been amazing, 68, 76 DK points. He's been playing huge minutes as well. Like, he's been playing like 40 minutes in regulation. So, I think Siakam is someone we could go to in tournaments. I think his ownership would be very low. It's obviously a tough matchup, but I mean, Siakam has been like matchup proof this season. Um, I don't mind going there. Van Vliet, though, at 8,100, I'll probably pass on. Same with Scotty Barnes, same with OG. None of the other Raptors really are, are that appealing today. And then on the Cleveland side, Mitchell and Garland, probably not going to go to. Don't love the matchup against Toronto. They both feel priced about right. I think we will need to keep an eye on the status of Evan Mobley. So if Evan Mobley does sit, I will have more interest in a guy like Jared Allen, more interest in someone like Kevin Love. Uh, Jared Allen this season been pr pretty productive in the minutes he's gotten without Mobley. He did play a lot of minutes last game. I know Mobley got into some early foul trouble. Allen played 40 minutes. Wouldn't expect you know, 40 minutes again, but I think we could probably get like, we'll probably get 35, 36 minutes from Jared Allen. And especially if Mobley is out, I, I do have some interest in Jared Allen today. And then whoever starts for Mobley, I don't know who it would be. It could be like a, a Jetty Osmond, maybe. Um, I don't think they would start Kevin Love, but if they did, Kevin Love at 4,200 would be a pretty good value. Um, he's a good permanent producer. They could start like, yeah, they could start Isaac Okoro, but I think Isaac Okoro started last game with Lamar Stevens out. Is Lamar Stevens, I think Lamar Stevens is out again. Um, he is, he's questionable. So like, I think if, if, Ke if Evan Mobley's out and Lamar Stevens plays, they'll probably start Lamar Stevens and then like Isaac Okoro. Um, but they might start Kevin Love. If Kevin Love gets the start, 4,200, I'd be interested in him as a value. But the rest of the Cleveland guys, I'm not in really interested in. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game, the Knicks and the Bulls. We've seen these teams play a couple times this season, um, obviously playing once again today. On the Knicks side, you know, the one positive here with these main Knicks guys is that they're just going to play a ton of minutes. Julius Randle, if this game's close, is playing like almost 40 minutes. Same could be said for Brunson and Barrett. Their price tags feel about right. 9700 for for uh, Randall feels pretty you know accurate, but he's been really good in this matchup this season against the Bulls. Don't mind going there in tournaments. Uh, Brunson and Barrett feel priced about right, but I think they're playable just because they are going to get so many minutes. And then last game, we did see Quentin Grimes get ruled out. He's questionable for today. Uh, Emmanuel quickly actually started last game in place of Quentin Grimes. So if, if, if Quentin Grimes is out again, I think we would see Emmanuel quickly draw the start. Um, probably played good minutes. He played 35 minutes last game, was pretty productive. I would definitely be interested in quickly for value if you know, Grimes is out again. So we'll have to keep an eye on that news. And then on the other side with the Bulls, don't love much on the Bulls today. DeRozan's 8,400. Um, Levine's 7,600. Vooch is 7,400. Where their price tag, like no, none of these guys really stand out. I think it's a pretty tough spot for Vooch. I think you know DeRozan at 8,400 is like an okay GBP option, but don't love him on this slate. Um, Levine at 7,600, I think it's like an okay option, but don't love him either. 
Probably just going to pass on the Bulls today. I don't see much I like on this team. Um, I know Alex Caruso is doubtful, so we'll probably see Io draw the start. But like when Io plays with the starters, he's not like the best permanent producer. He played 34 minutes last game and only had 19 DraftKings points. Even if Io starts today, I I'm not really that interested in him either. Um, so yeah, that probably does it for that game. I think we can go ahead and move on to the next game, Detroit and Atlanta. So looking at Atlanta today, they could be fully healthy for this. Uh, fully healthy for this game. Clint Capella is questionable. Could return today. We'll have to keep an eye on that. If Clint Capella returns, that obviously impacts guys like Onyeka Kongwu. A little bit of a downgrade for John Collins as well. You know, it's a really good matchup here against the Pistons. A really bad team, a really bad defensive team. So I think we could see one of Trey Young, Dejounte Murray, have a good game here. I think Trey at 10-2 is more of a GPP option. But man, the Pistons have been so bad defens defensively this season, and they've been so bad defensively against point guards that I think it's a Really good matchup for Trey. Trey's done really well in this matchup this season. He's averaged 54 DK points through their two games against Detroit. You obviously have to worry about blowout risk here, but if Detroit can keep this game close, I definitely think Trey offers a lot of upside. DeJounte Murray's been you know, not that productive last few games you know, since coming back from injury, but he's been playing big minutes, 38 minutes, 40 minutes. I feel like he's going to have a good game at some point, and against a you know, terrible Pistons team, like this could be the game that DeJounte Murray finally pops off. So Murray's a GPP option I don't mind going to. The rest of Atlanta, though, I'm probably going to pass on. And then on the Detroit side, probably going to full fade Detroit here. They're, they've been a team I've just kind of been avoiding for the most part. And on a 14-game slate, really don't see myself rostering many Pistons. Um, I will say that Jaden Ivey's been playing better as of late. 5,300, like, I, I think I could get behind Jaden Ivey. I think he's a playable option. Jalen Durant's going to continue to start and play pretty good minutes as long as he avoids foul trouble. Obviously had a really tough matchup against, you know, Joel Embiid last game. Wouldn't be the best spot here going up against Capella if Capella plays, but at 5K, we've seen Duran have the upside to pay off this price tag. So, like, Duran and Ivy are, like, the two guys I think I would go to from Detroit, but, you know, for my main lineup today, I don't see myself rostering any Pistons. I think, you know, if I were to play any Pistons, it would be, like, in, in you know, 150 lineups or something like that. I'd sprinkle some of these guys in. But that'll do it for that one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game. We still got, you know, seven, eight more games to get through, guys. So I'm going to try and do these quickly. Milwaukee and Brooklyn. So for Brooklyn today, uh, Kyrie Irving did not play last game, but you know he's going to be back for today. With Brooklyn pretty much fully healthy, I don't love much here. It's not the best spot against Milwaukee. This is a big time game, so you'll probably see these guys all play really big minutes. But I think KD, Kyrie, feel priced about right. Same goes for Ben Simmons as well. KD and Kyrie are always options you could pay up for, but on this slate, I don't see myself going to either one. On the Milwaukee side, uh, I believe Chris Middleton is doubtful, so we can expect really big roles for both Giannis and Drew. I think Giannis on this slate is someone that I'm definitely interested in as a payup option. I think this is a spot where he can have a lot of success. He's had a lot of success against Brooklyn in the past, had a really big game against them earlier this year, 74 drafting points in 37 minutes. Um, you know, given this is a big time game, we could see Giannis play like 36, 37 minutes here. Last game against Cleveland, he played 40 minutes in regulation, so... Minutes should be there as long as the game's close, which it should be. Um, I definitely have interest in Giannis today. The rest of the Bucks, though, like Drew at 8,200, I don't mind, especially with Middleton out, but I'd rather go to Giannis. You know, the rest of these guys, though, like Portis, Lopez, probably not going to get there on a 14-game slate. Um, it's really just like the stars in this game that I'm interested in. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one, uh, Indiana and Miami. So some big news to keep an eye on from Indiana today. Tyrese Halliburton is questionable for this game. Um, so that's really important. If Tyrese Halliburton plays, not really interested in him in this matchup. But if, Tyre, uh, if Tyrese Halliburton gets ruled out, we probably would see uh, TJ McConnell start at point guard. And TJ McConnell is very cheap, 3,200. He would be one of the best, if not the best value play on the slate if he were to start. McConnell's always been a really good per minute producer. I would assume if he's starting, he's going to play close to, if not over 30 minutes. So yeah, definitely interested in McConnell if you know Halliburton sits. The rest of the Pacers, though, in this uh, matchup, I'll probably just be avoiding the rest of the Pacers. And then on the other side, looking at Miami, pretty good spot here for Miami. You know, Indiana plays at a fast pace. So, like, I think Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, they have some upside. But the Heat are fully healthy now. They've got Kyle Lowry back for this game. Um, Kayla Martin, I think, is still questionable. But, like, I don't know if his return really would impact a ton. I feel like one of my, these Miami guys probably has a good game. If I had to pick one, I think Jimmy Butler would be my favorite. But where they're priced at, 9400 for Jimmy, 8800 for Hero, 8600 for Bam. You're not really getting discounts on these guys. You're paying the full price for them. So don't love much on the uh, you know on this game in general. It, really just paying attention to the Halliburton news is, gonna, is what's going to be important here. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game, the Pelicans and the Thunder. 
So for the Pelicans today, they're also on a back-to-back. We'll have to pay attention to their injury report. Uh, Zion Williamson was out on Thursday for health and safety protocols. We don't really have any update yet on him. Same with Brandon Ingram. He was also out for his injury. Um, Don't know if he's going to be back yet. I don't don't think Ingram's going to play, but Zion, we don't really know yet. So I would say that if most likely scenario is that Ingram and Zion are both out again. And if that's the case, CJ McCollum at 8,300 once again looks like a really good play here. Um, He's going to have a really big role without Ingram and Zion. Going to play huge minutes. Usage should be really good. Matchup, I think, is okay. Um, He'll probably be guarded by Lou Dort, but I still think that's a fine spot for McCollum. And then Jonas Valanciunas, he was one of the top plays on Thursday's slate. Love him here again uh, against the Thunder. I mean, the Thunder have been so bad defensively against bigs this season, and especially without Zion. Larry Nance was out as well on Thursday. Like, we could see another really big game here from Jay Val. So, very interested in Jay Val today as well. And then value-wise, I mean, like Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, Najee Marshall, these are guys we can look to for value because they're just going to have to play a lot of minutes, you know, assuming no Zion, no Ingram, no Nance. Um, I'd be down for those guys. Now, on Thursday slate, it was a two-game slate. I think I rostered like four Pelicans in my main lineup. Don't see myself playing four Pelicans today, but I definitely could get behind, you know, two or three of these guys. Uh, probably, you know, McCollum and Jay Val are my favorite. But value-wise, I think Trey Murphy looks good. I think Herb Jones is okay. I think Najee Marshall's okay. But of the value I plays, I would say Murphy is my favorite. Um, but that does it for the Pelicans. Definitely a team that's kind of interesting here, especially you know if Zion, Ingram, you know Nance are all out again. And then on the OKC side, you know SGA at 10-1, not super interested in here. Don't love the matchup against Pe- the Pelicans. He's probably going to be guarded by Herb Jones. I don't think it's the best spot for SGA. SGA is a matchup-proof player, but the Thunder, you know they've got their guys back. Giddy is back. Dort's healthy, so. Probably not the, the spot that I'm really going to go to SGA. Gideon Dort, I'll pass on. The rest of the Thunder, pretty much just going to be avoiding on a big slate like this. So I think we can go ahead and move on to the next game. Obviously, you know, a lot of my interest in this one is coming on the Pelican side. Next game, though, Dallas and Houston. So for Houston today, we'll start off with them. I don't really like much on Houston here. I think the guards, KPJ, Jalen Green, are both fine. I think Shingun's fine, but no standout plays coming from the Rockets. Um, do want to mention that Eric Gordon is out. So with Eric Gordon out, we'll probably see KJ Martin draw the start. If KJ Martin does start, he's only 3,700. I think he will be a pretty good value play. Um, I will be interested in him if he does draw the start. But that's probably it from Houston. Don't love much on this Houston team. And then on the other side with Dallas, I think it's a great spot for Luka Doncic. I made him the cover boy, the thumbnail for today. I mean, Houston has been getting killed by point guards this season. They've been giving up a lot of big scoring games to guards. And, you know, Luka could just torch this team. Like, they, they don't really have anyone to guard Luka. So... Even at 12-5, I think Luka's probably my favorite pay-up option overall today. We'll have to wait and see like what kind of value we get. If there's enough value to pay up for Luka, I really want to try and get Luka into my lineups because I think it's just a smash spot for him. And then Christian Wood has been starting as of late, and he's been playing good minutes. Last game only played 27 minutes, but I think this is definitely a big bounce-back spot for him against his former team. Really like Christian Wood today. Wish he was a little bit cheaper, but I think the matchup's really strong. I'm fine going to Christian Wood. Dan Woody, I'll probably pass on. The rest of Dallas, I'll probably pass on. Uh, definitely the guys that stand out most here are, you know, Luka and Woods. Specifically Luka, I really liked. But that'll do it for that game. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, Portland and Denver. So for Denver today, got to keep an eye on the status of Jamal Murray, who is questionable. Uh, Jamal Murray did not play last game, so we'll have to keep an eye on this. Uh, with Jamal Murray potentially out, that would definitely benefit guys like Bruce Brown and Bones Highland. Bruce Brown played a ton of minutes last game. 35 minutes was really productive, 31 DK points. Bones Highland didn't play as much, but I think his minutes would be you know, he would have a, definitely a bigger minutes ceiling. Like, there's a possibility with, without Jamal Murray, he could play, like, 25, 26 minutes. I know it didn't happen last game, but Bones Highland's a guy that can produce when he gets minutes. So he's an interesting GPP value play if Jamal Murray gets ruled out. If Jamal Murray plays, I think the one guy that I'm interested in from Denver would be Jokic. Jokic is just on another level right now. He's been playing out of his mind, been putting up huge game after huge game. I think this matchup against Nurkic is not the best. You know, Nurkic has done a pretty good job at limiting Jokic so far this season, but... Jokic is always playable. I would probably put Luka and Giannis ahead of him, but I think you know Jokic is fine on this slate. And then on the other side with Portland, I'm probably going to be avoiding Portland here. I think it is a really good matchup for Damian Lillard, so he would probably be the one guy that I would go to. We've seen point guards have really big games against Denver this season, um, especially like if Jamal Murray plays. I mean, he's not the best defender, and we've seen you know 72 DK points last time they played Denver. You know, the other time I think he had what 54 DK points. Like he's done a really good job in this matchup against Denver. The price tag at 10K should definitely keep his ownership in check. So I'm kind of interested in Dame as like a low-owned tournament play. I don't see anyone going to him on a big slate like this. The rest of Portland, though, probably going to be avoiding. Nurkic, you know, last game he only played 23 minutes, so it's kind of hard to really feel confident in him right now. 
he might not be 100%, but he's done pretty good against Jokic so far this season, and I think they're going to want him out there to play as many minutes, you know, guarding Jokic as he can. So even though he played 23 minutes last game, I think we do see more minutes from Nurkic today um, if he can avoid foul trouble and stuff like that. So like Nurkic, kind of interesting as a low on tournament play, but that'll do it for that game. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. A few more to go over, Memphis and Phoenix. So for Phoenix today, no Devin Booker. We can expect a really big role for Chris Paul. I think at 8,300, Chris Paul is a very solid play in the mid-range today. I know CP3 had a you know pretty mediocre game last game without Booker, but with Booker off the floor, CB3 should handle the ball more. His assist number should be great. He should be able to be more aggressive offensively as well. I'm fine going to CP3 today. I think he's definitely viable. Aiton at 7,900, probably going to pass on. Mikael Bridges at 6,400, probably going to pass on. The rest of Phoenix, the value guys, I'm not super interested in. Torrey Craig, like, as a value, I think is fine. But, like, he's probably someone that I'd play, like, on the late slate. I don't see myself playing him on the full, you know, 14-game main slate. Um, so that'll do it for that, you know, that team. I mean, really the guy that stands out most from Phoenix today is Chris Paul. And then on the other side with Memphis, so Desmond Bain is questionable. Desmond Bain's been out for a while. He's been out for like over a month. He can maybe return today. If Desmond Bain returns, that does impact guys like Triple J, Dylan Brooks. Um, it would take a little bit of a hit to Ja as well. I don't see much I really like on Memphis today. It's not the best matchup going up against a you know, pretty good Suns team, pretty good Suns defense. I think you're just kind of looking at like low owned dart throws here. John Morant's a low owned dart throw. Triple J's a low owned dart throw, but none of these Memphis guys really stand out today. Um, honestly, favorite play in this game is Chris Paul, and, and that's probably it. So we'll move on to the next game, the Wizards and the Kings. Wizards, another team on a back-to-back -back today, so going to have to pay attention to their injury report. Uh, both Chris S. Porzingis and Denny Avia did not play on Thursday, so we'll have to see if they play today. If they are out, we can expect you know, big roles for Kuzma, big roles for Bradley Beal. We can expect Daniel Gafford to start at center once again. All three of those guys would look really appealing if Porzingis and Avia are out again. Kuzma at 8,600, I'd be interested in. Beal at 8K, I'd be interested in. And then Daniel Gafford is a value play at 4,800. I'd have a lot of interest in as well. We've seen Gafford be really productive as a starter this season. Minutes have been pretty strong in the games he started. I'd be you know kind of interested in him for value. Um, but if Porzingis plays, then I don't see much I like on the Wizards. And on the other side with Sacramento... You know, Sabonis is another guy that's just been playing out of his mind lately, but re you know, really starting to get up there in price now. Ten thousand six hundred—that's a really tough price tag to pay for Sabonis. But if the dude keep put, if he keeps putting up 60, 70 fancy points a night, I mean, you're gonna want to have him. I just feel like some regression is coming for Sabonis. I don't expect him to continue to put up, you know, sixty fancy points a game. But he's he's playable. I mean, especially if Porzingis is out, I definitely think it becomes a better matchup for Sabonis. Um, De'Aaron Fox at eight eight hundred feels priced about right, but he's playable. The rest of the Kings, probably not going to go to on this slate. It's really just like Sabonis and Fox as like low owned plays, and that's that's really it. And the last game of the night, this one should be really fun, really you know exciting to watch. The Hornets and the Lakers, two really fast-paced teams. This should be a game that has a lot of points scored in it. On the Lakers side, you know, obviously no LeBron, or excuse me, no Anthony Davis. And I think Russell Westbrook is questionable, or he's probable. So Russell Westbrook is expected back for today, but still no uh, Anthony Davis. So without Anthony Davis, we can expect a really big role for LeBron. LeBron's going to play huge minutes here. It's a game that the Lakers should be able to keep close. They should be able to win. And obviously, you know, the Hornets defense is terrible. The Hornets, de or the Hornets team plays at a fast pace. So I do like LeBron as a payup option today. I think I would rather get up to like Luka and Giannis if I could, but I definitely have interest in LeBron. He's probably like my third favorite payup option. Westbrook at 7,600, I think it's just like, okay, don't love him here. Really, really good spot for Thomas Bryant. He's, his price tag is up there now at 6,100, but he's been really good in the games that he has started for AD, and obviously a matchup against the Hornets is a spot that we love to target. The Hornets have been so bad defensively against centers, so I definitely think even at 6,100, Thomas Bryant is still a pretty appealing play. But like Lonnie Walker, Dennis Schroeder, these guys I'm probably not going to go to now that you know Westbrook is back. And then on the other side, looking at the Hornets, Lamelo in tournaments, I have some interest in. The price tag is really up there. He's 9,800, but man, it's just such a good game environment, fast-paced game. Like these are the type of spots that Lamelo usually thrives in. And I know he's had some big games against the Lakers, you know, throughout his career and in, in you know the short few years he's played in the NBA. So I'm fine going to Lamelo. Wish he was a little bit cheaper, but I think his high price tag will definitely keep his ownership in check. Ubre not really interested in. Terry Rogier is questionable. If he returns, obviously, you know, pretty much takes Ubre out of play. The rest of the Hornets guys don't look that appealing if Rogier plays. If Rogier remains out, I could get behind Gordon Hayward at 6,100, but Gordon Hayward's been really bad. Like, he's been playing huge minutes. He just hasn't been that productive. It's obviously a really good matchup, and it's a good game environment, fast-paced, high-scoring game. So, like, I feel like Gordon Hayward could have a good game here, especially if Rogier is out. But, man, he's been so bad lately. His permanent production's been so, so terrible. 
he he's okay, but I'm not like I'm not running to roster Gordon Hayward here. Really, my favorite play on the Hornets is definitely uh, you know Lamelo, but. I think that'll do it, guys. I think that'll do it for this 14-game Friday night slate. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Or enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like button if you guys enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to the channel, go check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks, again, is the sponsor of this video. You guys can sign up for Prize Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOLA. If you look at the bottom of the screen, when you do sign up for Prize Picks with my promo code, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. Definitely check out Prize Picks if you guys have not yet. And as always, I should have a video posted for Prize Picks today sharing a couple of plays I like. If you uh, uh, if you guys want to check out that video, it should be posted on the channel sometime on Friday. But again, guys, wish you the best of luck on this big slate. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.